Hi, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today's our topic is SSOP Key Sanitation Area Number Six. Proper labeling, storage, and usage of chemicals, food additives, and toxic compounds. Now, let us start the video. The main aim of this SSOP Sanitation Key Area Six is uh, to prevent misuse of chemicals or food additives, toxic compounds during operations. Step number one is precautions to prevent injury of chemicals and other compounds. We have to educate the sanitation workers and hygienic team how to handle the uh, food grade chemicals, non food grade chemicals and the only the authorized person can able to handle those chemicals we have to give them training and at the same time we have to provide material safety data sheet in a local language it should be understood by each and every worker along with the material safety data sheet we also have to provide PPE personal protective equipments for example mostly the seafood industries uh, receives like uh, chemicals like uh, wet chemicals, chlorine and soap oil etc. So the cans, uh, 60 liter scans, so usually they will receive 60 liter scans. So when collecting 60 liter scans to the 5 liter scans for day consumption, so while collecting they have to use uh, PPEs, means hand gloves or goggles, masks as per the requirements as per the MSDS seat. They should follow those things, PPEs, while collecting. And they should have the chiffons also. Opposite to the chemical room, we have to provide eye wash shower stations. If accidental exposure of any chemicals, they should immediately rinse with the plenty of uh, uh, showers. That is the step one. Now the step two is, precautions to prevent product Contamination. See, like sanitizing agents, sodium hypochlorite. So, for utensils, they may maintain 50 ppm or 100 ppm. Like that, different food content surfaces, different concentration, non food content, different concentrations. After applying the sanitizing agent, they have to maintain proper uh, contact time, exposure time to neutralize or to oxidate the vegetative cells. After the exposure time, we have to educate the workers sanitation team to neutralize the chlorine residuals on food contact surfaces otherwise it will contaminate the chemical crash contact to the product that is the step two now the step three storage rooms should be away from food handling areas and also we should provide separate rooms for wet chemical as well as dry chemical. Why? Because wet chemicals like uh, chlorine and some others also due to their oxidative nature. So it will denature the dry chemicals. Mostly the seafood industries dry chemicals like phosphates, non-phosphates and salts. These are the food grade chemicals and non-food grade chemicals like bleaching powder etc. So they will use in the food industry. Dry chemicals separate room and wet chemical separate room the facilities should provide. Step number four food grade chemicals, non food grade chemicals, lubricants should be identified properly and separately kept at respective areas. Step number five so labels should be clearly visible and properly read. Chlorine and soap oil are liquid soap. We have to discuss with our suppliers. Color coding will be easiest way to educate the workers or to educate the sanitary team to handling of these chemicals. If we if you give instructions to the supplier, he will always supply 60 liters barrel of liquid soap in a black color can and 60 liters barrel of chlorine in a blue color can so that will be very easy in our establishment we are following the same manner 
and after that after receiving the barrels of six liters barrels and keeping in the wet chemical room for daily uses we have to uh, collect in the five liter cans so that also we have to maintain color code yes for example liquid soap we have to collect in a black color five liter can where has chlorine either you can collect in a white color five liter can or blue color five liter can so if you maintain color coding from the suppliers to the daily uses also it will be very easy for us to educate the workers and to prevent the accidental mixing of chemicals during processing and also while collecting the uh, chlorine for the day requirements from the barrel we have to use two shippers one is for collecting the sanitizing chlorine and the liquid soap is separate shippan so shippan should not mix ss shippans are advisable to collect the chlorine from the barrel into the 5 liters cans yes once you take this for day requirements to the facility we have to add in a food dip and hand dip or utensils washing we have to add extra chlorine for that we have to maintain two measuring jars for every section yes the measuring jar also should be labeled per chlorine and per soap oil don't use or don't mix the measuring jar which is used for soap oil per chlorine separate measuring jar should be provided section wise and labeled while preparing the solution 200 ppm or 500 ppm or 150 ppm this much ml is required to add to get this much ppm so the measuring jar also should be separate and the can also should contain the barrel in the wet chemical room so when you received the chemicals date of receipt of the chemicals if you are providing internal batch internal batch of the chemicals and you should maintain the stock record also the same should reflect in the facility uh, food processing area also every 5 liter cans contains batch number and name of the chemical and the measuring jar also meant for chlorine or meant for soap oil in every section if you maintain like that it will be very easy to identify to educate the workers and what about the food grade uh, lubricants <clears throat> mostly food industries uh, for agitators like soaking machines or stirring machines or ikf welds uh, for rotating objects so we are using uh, lubricants so for using food grade and non food grade lubricants we have to identify separately and keep separate and use the gun for food grade lubricant separate and non food grade lubricant separate colored guns we should use that is also the one best example to prevent accidental uh, mixing of these chemicals now the sixth step is manufacturers instructions and recommendations should be followed strictly seventh step is wet chemical rooms and dry chemical rooms what it may be the chemical rooms should always in a lock and key condition controlled by the authorized persons yes that is true and always we have to close the cap or lid because of exposing the air it will dilute the concentration of the chemical even in the inside the food facility also we should keep in a lock and key condition the five liters daily uses chlorine or soap oil also food additives like phosphates non phosphates usually there are many brands phosphates and non phosphates we receive in a bulk pack like 20 kg bags we will receive but for in our during processing operations it is very difficult to weigh the 20 kg bag into the required uh, quantity so what you have to do you have to maintain the color coding system for phosphates blue color bin non phosphates uh, green color bin or for salts black color bin like that you maintain and the pouches also if for phosphates you should pack 3 kg or 2 kg you weigh and pack in a 3 kg uh, blue color hdp cover and for non phosphate green color hdp color and for salts black color bags or 2 kg or 3 kg like that for example if you are using your your soaking quantity 
150 kilo or 250 kilo you are making in a tub if for example 2 percent you are using then 150 kilo means 3 kg pass phase so like that we have to prepare the day requirements we have to from 20 kg bags to 3 kg or 2 kg for easy handling in the processing so we have to make it into the uh, 3 kg packets or 2 kg packets in a color coding system so color coding system if you implement and mention in that uh, dry chemical room it will be very easy pass plates blue color non pass plates green color and salts black color like that if you maintain the tubs and color coding also if you display it will be very easy for them and that packets also should contain the batch number date of manufacturing and date of expiry and the same thing salt and non phosphate batch number date of manufacturing date of expiry and name of the chemical we have to mention why i am telling uh, packing these phosphates or non phosphates into 3 kg or 2 kg colored bags like blue bag green bag or black bag because while adding the chemicals to the uh, preparation time you, uh, you 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 have to cut the uh, bag but accidentally fall off this plastic into the food product if it is colored we can easily distinguish and separate during the processing if it is plain bag if you are packing in a plain bag and it will mix in the product we cannot identify in the product so that is why always you should pack in a colored bags salts also 1 kg packets are available consumer packs but salts also you have to pack if 150 kilo if you are using 1% salt then 1 and a half kg packet you do in the black colored bag while you can cut and add the solution if salt pouches are some transparent color while cutting and adding accidental fall of the plastic fragment in the product it's very difficult to identify so that is why we have to use the colored bags it is one brc requirement also so provide the msds in local language and educate the workers how to handle and make them aware the importance of non phosphates and phosphates mixing of these things will leads to the big problem so we have to educate the workers and maintain the color coding that's all about the video friends especially i made this video for junior technologists or junior physicists who are working in seafood industry thank you for watching my video if you like my video click the bell icon and subscribe my channel bye